Hello and welcome to the Caregiver Stories podcast, where we discuss all things dementia and hopefully share some caregiver stories along the way. My name is Kimberly Scott, and I'm a part-time caregiver to my mother, who at age 65 was diagnosed with dementia. And in 2019, I decided to start the Caregiver Stories podcast to one, educate people about dementia, to highlight caregiver stories, and the most important is for people to start having a tough conversation around what if you live, what do you want done? So please tune in. You can listen to other episodes or be a guest. You can go to thatkimberly.com and pick how you want to listen to the podcast or sign up for the podcast as well. And now that I got that out of the way, I'd like to welcome my guest and my friend today, Miss Ann Sadowski. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. You bet. So tell the listeners a little bit about your background and, and how you came to be a caregiver. It's not so much my having been a caregiver as supporting my sister ah, as a caregiver. Okay. So I am the firstborn of six children, three by one dad, three by a different dad. Mm -hmm. Our mom was diagnosed with Parkinson's. Mm. She had it 20 years. Wow. It started with rocking. Mm -hmm. and then the hands shaking mm -hmm. and then it slowly but surely went into dementia and my sister the first three of us me brother her sister Mia lived in California where mom lived and of course my brother's in Virginia I'm here mm -hmm. the other kids were scattered around California as well but Mia took on the the front of it yeah well she, because she lived up the street from mom in Carmel mm -hmm. and she divorced and so she moved down mom had a complete apartment downstairs and and our stepdad had died oh. and so mom was alone there so Mia we Randy and I flew out and helped her in three days got it carpeted painted everything done she looked at me and said go home you're killing me <laughs> so we created a very nice apartment for her yes. downstairs yeah and as mom got more and more deep away mm -hmm. from us Mia was trying to run a business from there. She's mm -hmm. a very active, if you think I'm outgoing and outspoken, it'll triple it for my sister Mia. Okay. And so I could tell it was beginning to fray on her because mm -hmm. she said, she gave mom a bell and she said, mom, ring the bell when you need me. Well, mom rang the rang and 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 rang. Because she wanted, you know. Did your mom know, know she had Parkinson or yeah. something was oh, wrong? Yeah, oh yeah, no, she knew. Okay. Yeah, she was diagnosed and, tried, but they never, they weren't, savvy enough uh, she's been gone for seven years mm -hmm. and the last two years were rough okay. she got to where she couldn't swallow mm -hmm. so anyway so mia came the other two sisters took care of mom mia came to visit for a week sitting in my office in there with me and 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 she had big tears in her eyes and she said i'm losing my fondness for our mother yeah and i said that's it mm -hmm. i'm going home with you yeah You've resisted and resisted and resisted. She needs to be in a care facility. Yeah. And you need to have your life back. You're too young and too vibrant and enjoy life too much. And she Good said, for her for telling you. I know, but she, and then she said, I feel so guilty. So we had to work through that. Yeah, absolutely. So I went with her. The other kids stood behind me. My brother got on the phone with her and talked to her. You came together as a team. Came as together a as a team yeah. because everybody had to be in, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And so, she and I, I had to drive because she was crying everywhere. And yeah. we drove from nursing facility to hospital yeah. to, uh, you know, whatever. And we found a lovely place, Ave Maria. And it's the, a lot of the Catholic priests and nuns retire there. We are not Catholic, but mm -hmm. you don't have to be yeah. live there. And it, they took very good care of her. Mm -hmm. And it was lovely. And she had the sense of humor all the way through. That's good. But then she became inappropriate sometimes with her sense of humor. Yeah, it uh, happens. Yeah, I arrived one time. She said, well, I got sent to the principal's office yesterday. Uh -huh. I said, oh, really? And that was the, the lady that runs the facility. Uh -huh. right? I said, what did you do? She said, well, and I'll clean this up because mm -hmm. mother got a little funny. Uh -huh. And she said, I got dressed for the day. The girl came in and dressed me for the day. And I said, I don't want to wear this. And she said, oh, Tranny, you ha I've got three other people. I've got to get dressed before breakfast. And she said, you're just going to have to wear it today. And she said, well, F you then. <laughs> My little petite, sweet, yeah. never. And we're like, okay. So I said to her, where did you learn that word? She said, I watch HBO. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know she knew what HBO was, was right? Yeah. 
So somebody was there daily. Uh-huh. And my sister usually would go at lunchtime mm-hmm. and feed her. If yeah. we reached the point we had to feed her. And then the other sisters would take turns going in the evening yeah. for, with her for dinner. Well, good for so, you for yeah. stepping up and yeah. for telling your sister, hey, this is not the way yeah. it needs to be. And good for all of you all coming together. Yeah. I've definitely heard st- stories of where there's only siblings one. Siblings fighting. Or fib- siblings fighting. And, and it's very heartbreaking to hear. And, and when it's just one person, because all the other siblings check out, that's also very heartbreaking. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's hard. And yeah. it's just as hard on you to hear that that your sister is going through that with your mom yeah. and you know my dad was at my grandmother's the last 10 years of her life and they were not did not have the same relationship mm. you know towards the end and it's it's bad yeah. you know and yeah. nobody wants that when my mom was diagnosed she refused for me to come home so i just go monthly but i also don't want to have the bad relationship that i saw occur with them with, yeah mm-hmm. because she's you know she's yeah. one of my best friends you know i love yeah. my mom so yeah. good for you for telling your sister we all loved all six of us loved mom mm-hmm. without question or doubt and all of us were willing to do i flew out at least quarterly yeah. and stayed 10 days and i took my shift yeah. the best that i could but i was farthest away. My brother came sometimes too from mm-hmm. Virginia. So she got a lot of attention. She knew she was loved. Mm-hmm. I do confess that once we fed her lunch and got her in her comfortable chair and she'd start kind of dozing off, mm-hmm. we'd sneak out and go shopping. <laughs> but then we'd but go back. Safe. Yeah, she was safe. She was, safe. She uh, was, she was safe, safe and we knew that. But I mean, the sense of humor, she said to me, the hammering and sawing is keeping me awake. And I said, where is it? She said, in the room next to mine. And mm-hmm. I said, Really? You think they're remodeling? She, yeah. And I said, well, why do you, are they remodeling? She said, well, the president's coming. Oh, so she had some. And I said, really? She, I, president Obama was president. They said, oh. The president's coming. And I said, well, that's good. When it started out, my sister corrected her for everything. Yeah. She, she didn't want her to be afraid, so she would tell her that she wasn't wrong about things and that she would, Mom, no, you haven't been driving the car. You have not been driving. And Mom would get upset. Mm-hmm. So I finally got the administrator to sit down with me and me, and I said, I think I'm right about this. Just go along. And mm-hmm. Mia said, I'm afraid that she will be afraid of what? Yeah. You know, of what? Yeah. So she would, you know, she was just always had a story. She said, oh, I'm so glad you're here, Anne, because I wanted to tell you, I want all the kids to know that I got married last night. And and my sister started, and I said, yeah. I said, really? Was it a nice wedding? Yes, I wish you'd been there. And my sister, Mia, finally said, well, what is his name? And she said, you know, I had to ask the preacher that same question. So <laughs> she was funny. She was yeah, funny all yeah. the way through, yeah. you know. But that's the, one of the major lessons is don't argue with them and try to correct them. Yeah, I had to learn yeah. redirection. Yeah, they're in their whole world yeah, and you just different. go along. Yeah, you just it doesn't go matter. Along. Was she resistant to moving out of her own surroundings? How did you guys do that? I think that? that she had gone downhill enough by then. We mm-hmm. had already had to put a hospital bed in her room mm-hmm. and, and have physical therapy coming fairly regularly or whatever. And she didn't have a fit, you mm-hmm. know. As she was dying, mm-hmm. and we put the house on the market, the way we took care of her mm-hmm. is rather than, than it be just all Social Security or Medicare or whatever, is she owned a million and a half dollar house, and that was seven, eight years ago during mm-hmm. the recession. We sold the house, so we were able to take care of her financially. Okay. And my brother was very adamant about that. You yeah. know, he's military. He didn't want our mom to be on the dole. Mm-hmm. He, we wanted to, so we took it's care true, of yeah. her for a long. So when we was that planned, her, or was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, she and my stepdad before he passed away sat down and made me the executor. Mm. Okay. And Good and for her. taking care of everything, and she did. Man, she managed the money. She took care of the money. Did she talk to you guys about it? Say Always. this is what I want. Okay. We knew exactly. We knew exactly. Oh, you're exactly. Very, that's very rare. A lot of communication going yeah. on. A lot. So the thing I was going to say to you when you ask about her moving out of her house is that we, when we told her we were putting the house on the market and we would be taking care of her with that, she sat and stared out the window and she said, "I wish I could see it one more time." Hmm. And we thought about taking her, but then it dawned on us that that would probably be rougher on her yeah. than, you know. Yeah. But she lived a good life. And the interesting that all the kids had been, all the, the local kids, mm-hmm. and me, Herb was still up in Virginia and hadn't come yet because he'd just been there for some other thing. And they called me and said, 
hospice said for you to come on Thanksgiving mm -hmm. Day. You ought to try getting a flight Thanksgiving oh, weekend gosh. to go to Carmel. Yeah. yeah. So I hustled out there, and the, the other girls were taking turns spending the night, and there are a lot, and I said, okay, I'll take Sunday night and Monday, and let me stay with her this time. And lo and behold, on Monday, I'm sitting there reading to her and heard her mm. take her last breath. Mm. So I was the only one there of the six yeah. kids, and I had just gotten there. Yeah. So if people told me that she was waiting for me. I was Aww. very touched by yeah. that. I was very That's touched awesome. by that. Yeah. Did yeah. your other siblings, were they okay with the fact that, they, you know, like for me, I was very, upset that I didn't make it to see my grandfather before he passed mm -hmm. because my mom kept saying, oh, don't yeah, worry, yeah, don't, you know. Yeah. And I regret that, not getting there sooner. Did, did, were they there had any? all been there. Oh, they all good. lived there. Herb came immediately, yeah, you know. They weren't. And then we actually, because we are a cremation family, mm -hmm. we actually waited. She died Thanksgiving weekend and then in December, when some of the grandkids were going to be there visiting their moms, my yeah. sisters, and everything, we had we had the service, and mm -hmm. so and you know, and it was a celebration of life. Yeah. We, you know, all of us told tranny stories. Mm -hmm. That's what and, I want. Yeah, <laughs> we told tranny stories, and we each of us picked a song that we knew she loved, uh -huh. and then we had the lady play a little bit of it on the piano, and we told about what memories came for us from the song. Yeah, that's awesome. And she loved Fly Me to the Moon. Mm -hmm. And I related that story that when I built this house, mm -hmm. she came to help me get organized and put everything away. And she spent $2,000 of my money at the container store for shoeboxes. I don't know what. <laughs> so we <laughs> got, got everything yeah. all put together. And the first night, I said, Mom, you get to initiate the jacuzzi tub. <laughs> so I hadn't turned it on before, whatever. Yeah. So I got her all ready, and I sat her down in there, and I started the water and got it deep enough, and I flipped it on, and all the jets were pointed straight up, and it went right up in her face, <laughs> almost to the ceiling. And I ran and turned it off, and she looked at me and said, for a minute there, I thought I was going to be the first woman on the moon. <laughs> that was her personality all that's, the way through. All that's the way awesome. Through. Yeah, until it just got to where it was just quiet all yeah. the time. So. What advice would you give to someone that has just found out that their loved one was diagnosed with some, some sort yeah. of, you know? Educate yourself. Okay. Educate yourself and get help. Mm -hmm. Get in a group. You and I are in a group, mm -hmm. you know. A support group, yeah. Yeah, a support group. And, you know, I always tell everybody, Google is your friend. It yeah. may not always be perfectly accurate, but at least you can get yeah. some information. It's there. very overwhelming. I got all my information the first two years through friends of somebody yeah. else or yeah. friends in the yeah. industry or whatever, yeah. but it definitely was so overwhelming that yeah. you kind of just don't know where to start. And, yeah. and my mom didn't plan you know, like that, mm -hmm. like the way you all mm -hmm. did. Um, so I, I do tell people like find a support group. It took me a while to find one, but but just talk to people and you know, there's so many more books out there now, I yeah. think, that the, yes. than there ever mm -hmm. were, but it is super. And then you have podcasts. Yes. You have other ways yeah. of learning. Absolutely. You know, of what you should yeah. do and not do. I mean, yeah. we, we need to know as much what not to do as we do what Absolutely. to do. Absolutely, yeah. What to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. And the reason starting the podcast is because I want people to be more planned like you all were, you know, mm -hmm. like you knew exactly what your mom wanted done mm -hmm. if she could no longer take care of herself. Mm -hmm. A lot of mm -hmm. people are not in that same situation and yeah. And so overwhelmed with the tasks of their own life on top of you know their family members life and it's it's heartbreaking because I know that if my mom knew what has to occur every single day for her to you know live in her own home and go through that's not what she would want I mean that's why she absolutely said don't come don't move back yeah. you know and the doctor said not to move her here to keep her in familiar mm -hmm, surroundings. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna do that as long as possible. But if people don't start having conversation about what if you live, not if you die, but what if you yeah, live yeah, and what yeah. do you, and you can't take care of yourself. Yeah. Do you want yeah. your children? Yeah. Do you want your spouse, whoever it is to go through that? It, I hate the word, but it's the only word I can use is that burden and that stress yeah, 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 that yeah. will occur to whoever it is that, yeah. you know, is going to be the one that steps up. Yeah. So, Good for your mom and your stepdad yeah. for yeah, taking. They were very savvy, very yeah. smart to do yeah. that. And I think one of the things there so, were so many kids. Yeah. They wanted to make sure their will was established. They wanted to make sure what they wanted done. Mm -hmm. They wanted to make sure that they, you know, and 
Mia had been, she lived close and had kind of been taking care of her. Yeah. The younger three kids were a little resistant because I think the firstborn of the second three kids got her feelings hurt because they made Mia the executor. Mm -hmm. and I, but everybody got over it. Everybody yeah. helped with the care. Everybody, and everybody ended up getting a little inheritance because Mia did manage the money. Well. Yeah. Well. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's still it's still just hard when you have to is. worry about those. Like you would said, your stepdad or whoever decided to sell the house. Yeah, we that, did. He was already gone. Well, that's the first thing that somebody told me. Oh, my my aunt told me because of my what my grandmother went through. She said, get the house taken out of her name because if she's ever going to need any kind of assistance which right now she doesn't but if that ever occurs because she does have her social security and her pension that the the house will be something that the government and i didn't know that you know mm -hmm. so and knock on wood what however that that you know she's going to be able to stay in her home as long as she possibly needs to and then if we put her in in any kind of facility which will be way you know down the road because mm -hmm. she's physically very healthy but i know they roam you know that's true you, you know they get out and i know that she'll be you know, hopefully we'll be able to handle that and if not we'd be able to get assistance but nobody talks to you about those you know, things when you talk about the roaming i'll tell you another really quick story just mia and mom in the house and mom's bedroom was close to the front door of the house and oh. mia's was right across the of the mm -hmm. way and somehow in the night Mom got up out of the bed mm -hmm. in her nightgown, went to the front door, a very heavy, big front door, mm -hmm. opened it. Mm -hmm. She could barely walk, got down three brick steps. The next steps down would have been 12 steps down, oh. but she fell into the flower bed, and this was like at six in the morning. Mm. Wow. And the neighbor across the street called and Mia picked up the phone, hello. He said, Mia, I hear Tranny calling your name. And she said, what? You could hear her all the way at your house across the street from her bedroom? He said, Mia, I think she's outside. Of course, she went running out. Yeah. And mom was in, and she was so cold. It's cold in Carmel all year at night, especially. Mm -hmm. She had tried to cover herself with dirt. There was dirt under her nails and trying to cover herself up. She was so cold. She had been laying there. So we had to have the ambulance come get her and take oh. her, and, you know, take her to the hospital for a couple of days because she was so cold. And yeah. So you do have to watch them every minute some yeah. way. And that's hard when yeah. you say your mom's alone right now. Yeah. She, so, well, somebody comes yeah. and stays with her Monday through Friday during the day. That's great. And then mm -hmm. she doesn't like to go out after dark, which, you know, I'm hoping will stay that way yeah. for a while. And then I talk to her via the Alexa. Mm -hmm. And then I monitor whenever I have a home monitoring system where I can see uh, there's cameras in the house when somebody comes to the door. Mm -hmm. You know, I see all of it. So that makes me feel a little bit more at peace, not 100%. Right. But, you know, but I know there's going to be a day when that's not going to work anymore. Yeah. So. Yeah planning is what I hope people understand from the conversations. Now you have siblings, don't you? Yes, I do. My brother's helping with my grandmother, uh, but you know. So you've got two people that are having to have care. Yes, yeah, for the most part, yeah. And my brother's a truck driver, so he doesn't necessarily, you know, he's not there all the time. And uh -huh. so his wife helps with my grandmother. So it's, it's a little bit harder. And in the beginning, he was in denial. You know, I feel like he, uh, and my stepdad also, my stepdad's a lot better now. But families go through this denial, like either they get angry and upset and also denial. There's, you know, these eight stages of caregiving yeah. grief. Yeah. And he was definitely in denial in the first several years that she can still go to the store. No, she can't because she can't find her car when she gets out. Mm -hmm. You know, if she can't pay her bills. How is she supposed to be able to, you know, go to the store and get her prescriptions, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we didn't know we didn't know. And if we'd had a conversation about it, it would have been so much easier, mm -hmm. you know, because she planned everything. She was the person who did everything. Like she was the, yeah. you know, the matriarch. Yes, of the absolutely. Yeah. So it was yeah. definitely something that was a shock and surprise when it occurred. But yeah, so good for your family and good for you being a, a great sister to, you know, stand by your sister to tell her, you know, that it's okay, you know, that she needed to to step let away go. from. Yeah, let go and mm -hmm. and step away. Self care is something that you know, we've talked about mm -hmm. and that, you know, mm -hmm. I learned way, you know, the first two years I ran myself ragged. When did your sister realize, or even you, that self-care was so important when it well, came to Well, you know, I, I, I think seriously until she sat right there on that sofa and looked at me and said, I'm losing my fondness for mom. Yeah. You know, because Mia is a social creature. Yeah. 
and she was having to be home all the time and yeah. trying to run a business out of her home. Oh yeah, that's... and then nervous when she left home about what was happening yeah, at home. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, you always have the fear of are they going to try to cook something? When uh, my grandfather got older, he tried to cook breakfast one morning and um, he left it and it started burning and I, I don't know, he ran with the skillet and burned his hands and set a curtain on uh, fire, you know. It, so it, yeah. there's a lot to be concerned about about them. It's, it's almost like having a child. It is. We come in as as needing help in, in diapers and yep. we go out yep. as needing yep. help and in diapers, yep. you know, unfortunately. So, so I say God gives people children because one of them Hopefully all of them, but one of them is going to take care of you. Right. Since I don't have any, right. then it's going to be my boyfriend, mm -hmm. soon to be uh -huh. <laughs> future uh -huh. husband, uh -huh. and or my niece and my nephews. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Because, you know. Yeah, because my sister Mia has no children. Yeah. And yeah. we talk a lot about, you know, her future. Yeah. You know, but I'm sure, has she She out? has married a great guy, and they're mm -hmm. very happy. And, yeah, they've got their wills and everything planned out. And what, you know, what but what if, needed. like, she... Like what if she outlives her Correct. health, you uh -huh. know? yeah. So I don't Does know. I'll know? have to ask her about okay. what their, their yeah. plans are with that. Hopefully, she has nieces and nephews from the younger siblings mm -hmm. that she's very close with. Well, so. hopefully, one of them will yeah. step up yeah. and yeah. and execute her wishes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, well, I appreciate you sharing your story with me and the listeners. I know I meet more and more people that I did not know and then as people hear about the podcast more of my friends are coming telling, and telling me, me yeah and I remember you talking about going out there yeah. but I didn't remember that it was Parkinson yeah. so and I just realized in the last two years that dementia is a symptom of like now I think it's up to like 70 diseases I've like there's a scientist wow. I interviewed but like Parkinson's was mm -hmm. is one of them you know Louis bodies mm -hmm. and it's Alzheimer and it's not just like people are always going oh dementia Alzheimer's no it's dementia is the symptom and then the diseases are all separate, separate you know mm -hmm. and dementia mm -hmm. you know it's memory loss mm -hmm. so it's been a very enlightening eye-opening experience mm -hmm. along the way so and not just memory loss but that they they have these little fantasy things you're know, like mm -hmm. mom with the president coming yeah or hallucinations yeah, yeah yeah she said to me I've been driving the car all around the parking lot today I said really your car she said no Jerry's car that's my son who lives here mm -hmm. he didn't have a car in California oh. you know but she the, your memories of your past yes. and of your children and it all comes in. Yeah. You know, it's either short term or long term. Starting to yeah. experience a little bit of that. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> said to me, when you can't sleep at night, you lay awake at night, what do you do? And I said, I sing every song I've ever heard in my entire life in my head. <laughs> my brain is just singing all the songs I've yeah. ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a natural thing if we're not practicing uh, formulas or looking at pictures or remembering people's names right. or situations. Right. And you can get like memory loss from taking the wrong medication, you know, being an alcoholic, yeah, um, yeah. all these other things. And the doctor explained to me, if you're not practicing certain things, you're not practicing, you're not exercising your brain, then it's going to happen, right. you know, and right. what we eat, you know, yeah, and like, a big, big reminder is what you're taking over the counter sleep aids, mm -hmm. even the good ones like melatonin or whatever, mm -hmm. it, it can make you dull the next day in the long okay. run. It will contribute to dementia. Mm. So you got to be very, very careful what you put in your mouth, Lovely. put in your body. Yeah. <laughs> I guess no melatonin, more than melatonin yeah. for me. <laughs> it's not every night. <laughs> yeah. I'll drink more wine. Yeah. Well, <laughs> or tequila. My new solution is to count backwards from a hundred, and that puts me to sleep. Oh yeah. And I'm a whiz at it now, man. Whoa. I can count backwards really? and not miss a number all the way and down, hundred to zero. <laughs> you're out. I'm out. No problem. That's right. <laughs> Well, thank you again, Anne. You're I really, welcome. really appreciate you for sharing your story. And if Anne's story and or advice is helpful, please share this with someone that you know could use it. And while you're there listening to the podcast, please rate it on all the great places that you can listen to, whether it's iTunes, SoundCloud, Google, Spotify, Amazon Alexa, YouTube, and all the other places. And until next week, remember sharing is caring. And to all the caregivers listening, in the words of Dottie Gandhi, you have my undying love, gratitude, and admiration because it is hard. And to everybody who has not had a conversation with their loved ones about what if you live and not die, please start having that tough conversation with them because tomorrow is promised to nobody. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. You're welcome, honey. <laughs>